Hi everybody, this is Diane. I thought I would try to do um, some of my stashes, no, yeah, stashes tree video, which the last thing that I pulled out of my little box was vintage doll patterns. So I've got uh, doll clothes patterns. So I got out all the doll clothes patterns that I have at this moment. And there are six of them. So I've been looking at them and trying to decide what kind of projects I could make with them. Um, I have ideas for most of them. I wrote them down so I'd remember what I wanted to do. The first thing I want to do is will be very simple because these dolls are all overlapping. So I want to keep them all together. And I could... Um, I thought I would just make a large journal card or a large pocket. So that'll be nice and simple. And that's what we're going to do. I didn't think about the insides, the instructions or the pattern tissue. But maybe this will be a two-part stash of stray where, where I use the images and then the inside and the back of the envelope and stuff like that. I'll save this in case I want to use it for something. So if I made it a pocket, I think I would make it a side. I'll just make it a tuck spot, I think. So it can be left open and there's a lot of glue in it. So I think I'll use, I brought in a pile of cardstock with me put that there and then I'm wondering if I want to have a border around it I don't I guess it's big enough as it is so I'm going to just glue it down and then I will probably sew around it and then I can add um, some embellishment to it but it's supposed to be a rainy day. It rained during the night and it's windy now. It's supposed to start raining I think at around one o'clock and it's 1130 ish. But I can hear the wind. All right so that's very basic and simple. Um, I do normally like to round the corner of a tuck spot, but I didn't think to do that. I'm going to get some trims and see what I can come up with for that. Okay. I have a lot to choose from. Some crochet doilies, some vintage appliques, rickrack, and little bits of lace. That's a bit from an apron with a little bit of rickrack on it. That little bit of crochet is cute. These daisies are not vintage. And I think I would like to put a piece of colored fabric around or behind that. that would be a fun pocket or even a journal card tuck spot or journal card I'm thinking what I'm going to do after I get all these ephemera pieces made 
and I, I won't get it all done today, I'm sure. Um, what I will do is probably offer these pieces, these finished pieces, in my Etsy shop. Let's look at, let's see what this is, what it looks like. So it's just another, it's a black and white image of the pattern cover. Of course, we have all these diagrams we can use. And the doll clothes tissue is really nice to use because the pieces are smaller. And so if you're making ephemera, <coughs> using it as a background. <coughs> wow, excuse me. You have smaller pieces to make your backgrounds more interesting. Especially with Barbie doll clothes. I don't have any Barbie patterns, though, at the moment. I think I've sold a lot of the Barbie of the doll clothes patterns that I've gotten. A couple of times when I got batches of patterns, there were a lot of doll clothes. But I don't use them much, so I think I sold a lot of them. So that's probably why I put this in my stash history, because... I use my sewing patterns, but I skip over these, so I thought I better use them. For these, these are all individual. They're not overlapping, I mean. And I was thinking of using these on small tags, the small size tags, and um, I have to fussy cut them out. So I'll, I'll try to do that tonight. And these are, like she, her foot is behind her and her the corner of her gown is behind her these two I could separate pretty well so what did I have marked down for them journal cards or cluster tuck spots I'll have to fussy cut them also <clears throat> One of these, I was, this one, I think, I was going to make two pockets. This one's cut out. And even that right there would be an adorable little border on something. All right, so I'm going to cut around them because I could cut it here and cut off the bottom of her dress. But then I'd have this blue showing. And I'm not sure what I will do with her. I think I'll just go ahead and put her, put this, these all, all three of these on a pocket and the bottom of her dress will just be cut off. I think I'll use red for that one. I'm 
I'm trying to decide if I want to cut the number off to make it shorter. Cut around the dolls like, like on this one. paper for that. I just like it better on the plain old paint. Okay. Well, um, I think it just looks kind of strange up there, but let me try some rickrack or something. Not strange, but empty. She's got a blue dress on, so I could use blue. And she's got little rosebuds, red rosebuds on her blue dress. Oh, I've got red tulips. Thought I had red rosebuds. Nope, they're just pink. I like that. So we're gonna leave the top on and I can leave the number visible. this out too before I glue anything down here. I would love to use that as a separate border. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm just gonna leave it there. gluing. Now there's little notches here where I cut out the, the dolls on the, you know, these dolls. So I don't know, it looks fine to me, but I don't know if I want to cover it. Hmm. 
looking for a skinny white rickrack that won't jump off the page and yet will cover those little notches. I've got this. It's got a little blue in it. That might be cute. Yeah. Let's see if it was on a page. I started cutting some of the Barbie book pages. So it wouldn't fit in the Barbie book, obviously. This will do to the rickrack. That's why I didn't want to cut this edge. I guess I could just put a little down here. Okay, so we have two pockets and a tuck spot or journal card. Now, what I would do with these pieces at least, what did I have written down for this? Four, six, five, two pockets. Probably was gonna do the same thing that I did with these. But these, I wanted to make um, cluster tuck spots that I've made before with Carla Frizzell's idea with children's book images. I tore his foot off somewhere along the way. Um, I, don't, I didn't cut anything special, <coughs> so I don't know if I have the right colors and pieces cut but I put them on a background and then add little embellishments. But that requires a fussy cutting. So I think what I will do is I will edit this and see how short I make this video. And then I will do another video after I fussy cut some of these images and make more things and then see if I can put both videos together. If not, I'll make two separate videos. And then you'll get to see what I do with these pieces. So I hope that you found these ideas inspiring. And if you have anything similar, that you can get them out and create with them. I'm glad I'm finally using these. I'll see you in the next video. And I hope that you do something creative today. Bye. Hello, everyone. I'm back. Um, I, this has been some time since I ended the first part of the video. I got all these dolls fussy cut. I did sew around, no, yeah, I did sew around this one before I glued the pieces on. This one I forgot to sew around it, and this one I'm not going to because it's got too much shape to it. Those are pockets, and then I had one more sewing pattern I wanted to make pockets with. I will trim around that better at the top, but these will be narrower because I cut off 
this part of the pattern. So these will be, these will work in a smaller journal. So I'll do these in a very similar way to these. Now the other ones, the, the fussy cut dolls, um, one of the patterns with the smaller images I wanted to make tags with and the other two patterns I want to make cluster um, tuck spots. So these are cut um, two and a half by four and three quarters. Yeah, two and a half by four and three quarters. And it's approximately this size. So for this one, I took the back part where it tells you how much fabric and um, lace and stuff you need. And I um, cut that and glued it to the back of, or to the background of the tag. Cut this off of one of the pattern envelopes and backed it with red. <clears throat> Added this sweet little doll with her red and white stripes. And of course, uh, there was a little space at the bottom, so I added red and white stripes there. And this is one of my die cut tabs in red and some vintage postal twine here. So I already inked around it and, you know, put the twine in it. So this is a completed tag. It's pretty simple, but I love the striking red and white and black design. So um, maybe we can do one more. And uh, depending on how long the video ends up being, you know, I may have to eliminate steps from any of these projects so that I can get all of them into one video. Um, so here is a piece of pattern, and this one is longer, so I don't think I'll have a gap at the bottom. You could also use the instruction sheet that is inside the pattern, or even a tissue, pattern tissue piece. This little ruler along the edge is also a nice embellishment. So, you know, save all the little pieces of the pattern that you cut up. Um, the sewing tissue would have to be a piece that has a lot more detail, not just like the skirt piece where there's no markings on it in order to provide interest. Unless you just wanted the, the texture and color of the pattern tissue, that would be fine too. Gonna let that glue dry just a little bit before I cut the angles on my tag. And these are the dolls that I want to make tags with. I like this little overall girl. She's so cute. And she's facing straight forward, so I think I'll put her right in the center, at least um, widthwise, not up here, but down here. And I want to use an element from sewing pattern like this or some kind of decorative element. Mm. Let me see what I have in here. I like this one. She is so sweet.
I like it right there, but I don't want to cover that flower, of course. I can put it over here. And I just took my tag and I, I usually eyeball punching the hole, but since I had this, I used this. You're gonna, you see, I'm going to have to cover that because it's dirty where the glue messed up and I tried to clean the glue off. And I have my little box of reinforcements. And I want a blue or a red. I think maybe a red. Oh, these are the same ones I used for the first one I did. So this one has point facing down, the middle point, and this one has, if I turn it this way, it will have both points, the two points pointing down, but I think I like it better this way. She's so sweet. I have one just about ready. I just have to glue her on it, but I wanted to show you something before I do. So I have a bunch of shapes already cut. Uh, this one was with my Big Shot. And this, I, I just used my two and a half inch punch to punch that circle. And I just punched that flower. So these kind of punches. Um, but I cut a bunch of different shapes with different colors ahead of time. And I keep adding cut out images to this tray. I've got to organize this tray um, with my little figures and then the, the background circles and then all the other extra pieces that I add on. So a, a bigger tray, I guess, would be helpful. So this is what I have so far. I have the two pieces and I have a refreshment ticket uh, this number that I cut from scrapbook paper and this flower that I punched with a uh, paper punch. And I have this little pattern doll to glue on there. But part of her sticks up. Um, I wasn't sure how much of her hand would stick up. And I want this to be a tuck spot, so she's not going to be glued down. This will be glued down around the edges, and then you can tuck something in there. So I needed to protect her. She is cut from a fragile sewing pattern envelope. So these dolls are all kind of fragile because um, the one date that I saw was 1960. So I think some of them are from the 1950s. So I just put her on some a scrap piece of copy paper, just some white paper. It's not going to show, but I just put her head and shoulders and her arm on it and glued it down, cut her out. And now when she <coughs> gets glued on here, her head is reinforced and a little tip of her hand is gonna stick off of that, I think. And 
then she's ready to be glued onto a page. So let's see if we can put together another one. I'm not sure how much I'll have to edit out for time's sake. These dolls are from two different patterns. This one is a quite wide one because of her dress. Them in my Etsy shop. So I'll come back and show them to you when, when I'm ready to have them in the shop. So I hope you enjoyed seeing this. We have with my doll clothes patterns. I have cluster tuck spots, adorable little tags, and some pockets. And this either journaling card or pocket. So let me draw and see what the next thing will be. And we have all my papers in here. When I draw them, I put them back in. Um, but I don't need to keep the doll clothes one because I'm using up all of the doll clothes patterns. I had six patterns and I'm using them all if I get all these done. All right, what does this say? Digital cards. Okay, I have a lot of digital cards already printed. That's the idea to use the ones that are already printed. And so I'll have to go through them and select which ones I want to use and create something with the digital cards for the next Stash Street video. I hope you enjoyed this. Tell me if you're enjoying this series. And I will be back with another video. So I hope that you do something creative today. Bye.